Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of The Founders Show, um, where our aim is to connect you guys with uh, leading entrepreneurs, uh, where we like to talk about their journey, their successes and failures. So perhaps you could get some inspiration from it or relate to, you know, um, something that they've faced in life, which might be of value to you. Um, so today we have an interesting guest. Uh, his name is Mustafa. He is uh, a, a serial entrepreneur, um, mainly in the field of technology. So I'm really excited to have a conversation with him today. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Mustafa, to the show. Um, how's it going? Not too bad. Honestly, it was a busy day. Um, so one meeting and then the next and then literally just came in and now I'm here. All right. All right. Yeah, you were late to the show officially. <laughs> all right. Um, that's okay. Um, again, these are some of the traits that our uh, founders have. Um, so the way I like to start this is to, first of all, focus a little bit um, on, you know, how it was like the early stages, you know, growing up, um, just so our audience can relate to, you know, some of those situations that perhaps you were in. So tell me about early stages of life, you know. Early stages as uh, as a student, when I was in school, I think I wasn't really much into studies. I'm not going to lie. Um, and later on, um, honestly, I think business itself started when I was in university. Till school, I was just fidgeting with different things. I loved music, by the way. So music was one thing that I was... And I still love music, so I still play music a lot. Uh, I think it's my unwind sort of a station. Right. Um, but business sort of came about when I was in university. Right. Uh, in third year. And started with Novardo, which was, uh, I wanted to connect people living in apartment buildings. And that's where it all started off from. And um, slowly but surely it didn't work out. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. Because, you know, for a normal person uh, to think about, connecting people in an apartment building. I've also lived in buildings for yeah, a number of uh, years, but I've never thought about connecting them. So <laughs> I would really like to know what 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 sparked that interest. Honestly, I was just, uh, I, I wanted something and, and I didn't have it. And I was in my apartment and it was late at night and stores were closed. And literally I was like, you know, I wish I could go and talk to somebody on the same floor and maybe they have it, right? Um, and I realized there was uh, no platform for me to do this. And I also learned that in apartment buildings, even though you're living so closely to each other, yet you're so far apart. Um, and I wanted to bridge that gap, in essence. Right, right. So so basically, you wanted to save on groceries and <laughs> eat someone else's eggs. All right, <laughs> makes sense. Um, um, no, that's that's really cool. I mean, jokes aside, that's uh, it, it's a really interesting concept. And something I also wonder, right? Like, uh, even though you're in the same building... They're pretty much strangers. Uh, exactly. Um, so amazing. Um, but from a business standpoint, right? Like you you identified a need in a market, you know, you wanted to connect tenants. Um, you created a product, gave it a name of uh, Navardo. Now tell me about the product mm -hmm. now once it's done, you've created the product. Uh, how was it like taking it to market? And um, that was the biggest learning curve. Um, a very excellent point that you've picked on there. Um, so when you're young, when it's your first product and you have that sort of energy, that fire inside you, you just want to build. And you build within your dreams. So you think that what you're thinking is it. It is a solution. And you have a lot of people vetting um, for you. So you have a bunch of friends, um, you know, people around you. They're like, wow, this is such an amazing idea. I think it's going to, you know, you're going to be the next billionaire, I think. It's so cool. Uh, nobody's done this. And so on. Um, what I really missed on was uh, product market fit or, or product validation. And uh, this is this is something that comes hard and it hit me hard. So it's like a wall. And if if you haven't really studied the the aspect of what market is and how market works or functions and you're building before understanding the market you are pretty much bound for failure so this was lesson number one uh, very important for uh, you know your viewers and um, so what happened I, I built the product 
invested a lot of money in it and um, it was personal fund so i had no investor and um i i took it to an apartment building owner and uh, i still remember she looked at me and she said wow this is brilliant that's that's so cool i'm like thank you uh, will you buy it she's like oh me i buying it no no we can't buy it it's just cool and i'm like if it's so nice uh, the value proposition is right there and i i i laid out all the features and this and that and she said it's all great but you're missing on one very important risk component that you haven't really either you failed to look at it or i need a solution to this and i'm like what's what's the solution and she's like so you do understand that by doing this you will connect everybody living in an in, a, in an apartment building i'm like yes that's the whole structure of the idea and she looks at me and she says if you do this you, they could create a union in some way so if i make a mistake hypothetically speaking they could all come together and go against me i was like okay yeah that 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 right. possibly right. they could do and and obviously in that moment yeah. i realized okay you know what yeah. might not work so, yeah so 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 it was going into a situation that you had not planned you know you had a very humble idea of of connecting tenants and slowly perhaps building it out as a business but you never thought of people potentially unionizing and exactly it's so a, so uh, yeah. yeah so so um i guess uh something you mentioned in that answer was the to have the right product market fit yes um i think that's really interesting and um from what i what i understood is that you know you had a product in mind a specific use case in mind for that product but the market perhaps wasn't there yet correct yes. right all right so is it safe to say novardo is a billion dollar company now or is it uh, out the drain What's so honestly this? in terms of personal value what it gave me it's i think it's more than a billion because what i learned from it right. i couldn't have learned otherwise right but of course if you look at it from the third person's view right. um they might not understand the experiences that i went right. through so number one project management right. number two understanding of technologies and their stacks understanding what front end right. is what back end is you know what different technologies can do possibly when they come together and so on mm -hmm. so i feel that was a lot of experience and money was not wasted in in this perspective but yes in terms of from a business perspective yeah um, i did invest and money didn't come in so from that perspective it's down the drain i guess i mean it's it's still there um in terms of portfolio i i still have it yeah. it's, it was my first project so i save it i keep it but yeah that's that's pretty much i it. see okay so um i think this is a an interesting interesting point you 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 raised right like um when when you get into a business you don't necessarily think of um what you learn the people you'll meet the 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 space you'll enter um all that you're going to perhaps you know pick up um because i'm sure a technology product you might have been connected to developers you would have understood perhaps development cycles you mentioned project management so i guess i and, and this is a good way to lead into sort of my next question um is that you know what do you do now and how did these skills from perhaps your first failure translate into success for what you do now that's a that's a brilliant question um i see you you're you're looking for a lot of value in in well in yeah i mean for right? me it's important that it's good, my it's good, viewers it's good. get it's very, value very, out of yeah, this very, show, right? very very and, interesting and, questions yeah. and and a good way to probe the questions as well so you know the train of thought is still there um so as i mentioned novardo taught me a bunch of skills which included product uh, project management how to talk to developers <clears throat> leading them and so on and so forth <clears throat> after building the first product um and it not generating financial value i moved on to another project called fidista i was working in partnership with a restaurant here and um i built the product once again because it was second nature to me by now it was novardo was such an extensive product it was much easier for me to build it and it was a great product however um due to some unforeseen circumstances we couldn't really conclude the next project even though there was some cash flow right 
Um, Sorry, just clarify quickly what Fidista is. Fidista is a meal meal plan company. It was a meal plan company. It was an online subscription platform where people could come, subscribe, and then they would have meals. And that's why I was partnered with Restaurant Awesome. Sorry. Um, Yeah, no worries. So uh, it it didn't work out. Um, There was some minor cash flow, uh, positive cash flow, but it didn't work out. And by the time it didn't work out, I realized something very important, that if I were to keep continue continuing this, this this journey of building things, um, I need to have the infrastructure in place. Otherwise, I cannot infinitely keep spending money, right? Or you have an investor, right, who can keep pouring in money and you keep right. doing this. Right. In my understanding, what I really uh, wanted was the infrastructure in itself, simply because you keep ahead of the market then. Um, so it was in my mind, but then automatically somebody just came up to me <clears throat> and said, I've seen Novardo, I've seen Fidista. It's pretty cool. I'm I'm working on a project. Can you help me? Right, right. And right. that was the first transition. That was the first project that I got um, that led to a development ecosystem. And this person told me the same thing. They're like, I need a development partner, like a development ecosystem. Can you provide that for me? Can I hire people from your expertise? Can you figure it out for me? And that's how I got into talent management, um, you know, running into an understanding of how to bring together, you know, top minds, top developers and, you know, uh, bring them under one roof and then sort of understand the dynamics of building fast uh, prototyping, which is a different science in itself. Right. Um, so so what I'm understanding here is that, you know, you wanted to build um, different products. You wanted to you know, introduce new things into the market, right? With your meal plan service, with the apartment building um, um, software that you were thinking of uh, and built. Um, and and I guess you wanted to sustain all these ventures by having a company, right? That Correct. can That can not only work on your products, but also have a... Uh, sustainable business model that doesn't run you into the ground. That is correct. Right? Yes. Okay, that's Absolutely. that's interesting. That's interesting to me. Um and and this is something I wanted to discuss and I think our viewers are really interested uh to know the 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 financial struggles um initially as well, right? Like like you came up with a strategy to um fund your products and do it through a profitable business, which you learned along the way, which I think is a is a great lesson for anyone who's watching. Um, so tell me about um, the 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 financial aspects of when you started off. Um, you know, like now you're not in the business of just creating products, but you are in you have a technology business where you're perhaps outsourcing technology services. Um, that's uh, a different different breed, right? You need clients, you need human resource, just like any other company, and all the uh, all the rest of it that comes with running any other company. So tell me about this transition. Tell me about um, and and I would like it if you could also shed some light on the financial aspect. So the financial aspect is a very deep subject, to be honest. Um, it, it solely comes from the understanding that tech does require money. Why? Because it's engineering. And um, working with developers is not that easy. It's difficult. And essentially, the longer they take to build the product, the more uh, you know costly it's going to be, which brings to a strategy which we call an MVP strategy, where you build a minimum viable product as quickly as possible using uh, technologies which are open source. Um, you have many of many many things out in the open. You can use them to build quickly. Once you have some traction in market, you can push for um, proper development and development in house, right, and so on. Um, or even if it's outsourced, but I think that comes later. First things first, you need to hone in on your costs and then move there, which I did not do. So for me, I built the entire product first time, second time. After that, I really understood that I I didn't really need to completely. F- complete the project. I could have had like just out of the 10 features, the two most important ones. And I could take that to market and just validate, will people even use this? 
And if there's an agreement or there's some harmony between the product and the market, yes, I'll build the next fee- next feature. And are you willing to pay me? Right. Um, so that's the concept of overall evaluation of how a product is built or how I believe it should be built coming from my experience or my perspective. Um, whereas finances are concerned when you look at it from a development ecosystem, so where you've created an ecosystem where you have clients and people are coming in and they want products developed, I think there is a lot of responsibility on you because tech in itself is very research dominant. You need to have somebody who's constantly doing research. Technologies are constantly evolving and changing. And you need to have that prowess or that market intel where you have the ability or the capacity to um, always stay up to date. Mm-hmm. And um, and if you have the ability to do that, right. of course, there is a cash burn aspect there because you need somebody yeah. who you're paying constantly who's, the, you know, it's, it's like an infinite loop. Yeah. Um, but it does pay you back in terms of the R&D that you have, in terms of, for example, we started building blockchain solutions. We started building AI when AI was just, you know, booming um, working on the metaverse, for example, right? Um, a lot of tech companies cannot do this currently. Um, and the ability for me to do this is because I am a part of Renesis Tech, right? Which is a software development company. Okay. And then there's Arcadian Lab, which is a game development company. So I get expertise of both and I get to balance it out in some right. one way or the other. Yeah. So leveraging what you have, the infrastructure that you have, if you can leverage it properly, I think you can achieve a lot. All right. Um, <coughs> Lessons, everyone, lessons. Uh, He started off, uh, you know, creating a product first, throwing it into the market, putting all his cash, and failing. Now, uh, from what you mentioned, right, to create an MVP, to to actually create just bits of the product, test the market first, see if there's a need, then go on completing it. I think that's a brilliant thought, and I think it's a it's a brilliant application. So I think this is something that that people watching can really um, learn from. You know, anyone uh, if they have ideas on on how to start off and you know how to create something and introduce it into a market, perhaps it's best to just have a snippet of it and show the value proposition. And if there is a solid need and if the market adaption is there, then perhaps, you know, it makes sense to, to build more on it. Absolutely. So um, I think that's a great uh, thought, a great Thank lesson you. for anyone who's watching. So kudos to, to that. Um, something I, I want to sort of discuss now is, because you, towards the end of this, this, this last bit, you mentioned getting into the blockchain space, the, the NFT space, perhaps. Um, and you also mentioned technologies evolving, right? Um, how do you keep up to date with with trends? <clears throat> so one is if you understand the market wave, it forces you to understand it. <clears throat> it's it's your lens. If I am looking at the market, <clears throat> sorry about that. If I am looking at the market, and I see that the market is changing, obviously in order to do this, you need to have certain awareness of the flow of technology. Where are things going? And um, there are many, many websites. There's a lot of information out there which is telling you that the demand is for this. For example, blockchain right now. And then suddenly blockchain crash comes in. So the news is telling you blockchain might not be the best for right now because the market sentiment is not aligned with hopes, I guess. I I guess what I'm... Um, and I want to stop you there just because I want to know, is it that you see financial opportunity when you're pursuing, say, an emerging space like the, the, the blockchain space, uh, the NFT space? Or is it just that, you know, you want to, from from your tech business standpoint, you just want to be able to to provide those services so for so others who want to get into this space can utilize the expertise of your company. Um, inevitably, what's the motivation? Inev- inevitably, it's either whether you go from the product aspect or the service aspect, inevitably it's financial in nature. Right. Um, because as a business, you need to be able to support yourself, which inevitably does occur only when you have a financial transaction that takes place or you earn, right? Um, but there's a lot of trust that is required. A lot of people have money. Right. Um, 
but and a lot of people have dreams where actually when i think about it honestly it's it's a business of building dreams tech is applicable to any industry and in every industry and if you are in the business of building dreams and building people's hopes you need to have a set criteria of how you do it right which means that there needs to be a there needs to be certain trust there needs to be a certain delivery mechanism there needs to be certain um value proposition that if you build something for someone they have the potential to earn and so on and so forth and there needs to be a validation to this so which means your current portfolio what have you done what have you built and so on and so forth um so i think that plays a very important role in the entire ecosystem of whether i want to look at it from a product perspective or service perspective at the end of the day it is finance it is the financials which keeps you going even your clients going right so it's in our best interest to do whatever we can so that our client can make more money because then obviously it's associated with us and then yeah. we the, you know therefore make more money or if you're building a product like i said because product tech is a cash drainage system essentially yeah so you really want to dish out something small something quick mm-hmm. don't make the full big massive product make a small version of it take it to market validate it check mm-hmm. if it works it works if it doesn't work you move mm-hmm. on to the next i see and yeah that's a it's a it, that that's a good point um i guess some people might be wondering now uh to to get a feel of 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 your company because when you when you mention all these products uh, a thought that comes to my mind is you know what kind of bandwidth are we looking at you know how are these guys handling all sorts of these 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 technologies and and working in so many spaces so tell us a little bit like a quick snippet of renesis technologies how many people you have what sort of revenue you know you you're looking at um and and where is this company going so renesis tech has about 90 employees i'd say give or take but they're okay. always like there's a plus minus here okay um at one point we had more than 100 okay. um but right now it's 90 it could be 85 and then again to 100 it depends on you know um, right. the demand and supply aspect of things um and so that's renesis tech and in how long did you this was about get to four four to five years i'd say from okay wow that's that's brilliant yeah yeah and then um so the way i hedge it as an investor because essentially that's who i am if you look at it closely right um arcadian lab is where i hedge products with services is renesis tech and and this is arcadian is is a game development ecosystem Right. Yes. So we we so the, are this, you making all sorts of games or are you So the mobile games. Mobile games. Mobile so games. like on your phones, Correct. iOS, yes, Android, yes, yes, yes. stuff. Yes. Gotcha. Awesome. So we have games that, you know, have hit the top charts and so on. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And and that's also existed for That's six, that's six that's years. existed for about approximately 4 years, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But but first it, it was another story, you know, started off with just making games for um certain clients and then not clients but publishers so right. it was never a client business to be honest and then moving slowly towards publishing ourselves and that's what we're doing now awesome um so we we are a little bit short on time so uh, uh there's there's something in particular i wanted to get your thoughts on um sure. uh because we talked a lot about different technologies but nowadays artificial intelligence that's i had true. to bring it up yeah 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 of course um what are your thoughts on that it's it's a it's quite a broad subject matter i mean right i mean on. i just want to know whether because obviously you seem to jump on new technologies mm-hmm. and you have uh, a a perception of right. these new technologies mm-hmm. so so from your lens right like the business that you're in um do you see ai as a disruptor or as a a connector to perhaps you know even elevate what you're doing so just some thoughts on that quickly so c- quickly i think a it, it's a very deep subject um, right. but but, right. but my quick thoughts here would be i this is what my personal opinion is given my understanding of ai so far yeah. will it disrupt yes it will there's there's no doubt um will it cause all jobs to completely be obsolete um well a lot of them would change i think in in nature but yes it will take over a lot of things mm mm-hmm. especially your everyday 
sort of jobs like writing letters right content writing writing is a big part of who we are essentially and right. if ai starts to take over that and as an aggregator which ai is um we can understand that it will only turn into something more powerful and if you fuse robotics with ai you're looking at you're looking at quite an interesting future i'd say right um and and what does that mean for us i it does mean that things will change for us um i think the, the overall landscape of who we are what we are how we're doing things will change right how we perceive things will change um and i think it, this will amplify in nature once quantum computing goes live properly okay and that would be just a game changer completely right because of the speed metrics and so on um and then if blockchain is also fused into it and everything is online and it's a store of value as well which is so it could turn into something extremely extremely powerful and something i i would consider this more of an evolutionary curve than than anything else um from a from a mankind or human perspective um, right it, it's more of a ch- the, the transition that we had when when internet first came i think this is more of that transition yeah. because these two core technologies are too powerful um and when they're fused together especially with the metaverse right so imagine living in a virtual world where you have a virtual currency which actually has monetary value outside of the virtual world right. fused with ai which is now telling you certain things certain protocols which weren't there before yeah i think we're looking at a very interesting world without a doubt interesting so so it's not the the these these technologies individually but also the synergy they create when they all come together 100% um are you worried about ai turning against us yeah, that's always a yeah thing. that's 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 a question now on everybody's mind it, it could i mean there is an ai out there uh the destroy the world ai i think it's called i'm not sure what it's called <laughs> right. but somebody right. built it obviously yeah. um it's a genuine fear i mean it is it is i mean me, could could is, something yeah, happen yeah, yeah cybersecurity i think would play a very important role in the future okay. this is just for the naysayers and for people who want to get into development ecosystems or in the startup world i think if they work into look into cybersecurity i think that that that's very very important uh that will be yeah for sure because you could hack um programs right gotcha. and if you do that and if you want something bad to happen i mean you could in essence do do it right so i can't really say that mm-hmm. will ai be able to destroy the world no yeah. it cannot it it can i mean there's yeah. no doubting yeah. that yeah it's it's hard to put a, yeah, it's hard to put it's hard to bound it together correct gotcha. yeah yeah um so again uh i want to bring as much value as i can from this conversation to our viewers so i i wanted to discuss the future of technology or i guess it's so rapidly changing um but for someone who has perhaps you know listened to this conversation and they want to perhaps also build a technology company uh maybe they want to get involved in these spaces how do you see in the next 5 or 10 year horizon um the technologies that people should be working on um and um you know where is most of the opportunity going to be in tech in the next 5 to 10 years so tech once again is a very broad subject matter right, right. but given the right. base of these technologies what i'm looking at is cybersecurity as i mentioned right fintech which then fuses blockchain mm-hmm. ai 100% but it's your application of ai because ai mm-hmm. just came in it's more of a chatbot right mm-hmm. now but in and it's in it's in its uh i wouldn't say p- pure infancy but yes in its infancy in terms of what you can still do with it so your your applications what you're capable of developing out of these uh these chatbots and so on i think that's very important and then robotics which is the future for sure i see uh, and then quantum computing as i mentioned so so all of these come when they come together um right so any of these spaces any of these spaces i believe be, yes um yes. A, a good way to enter into to the enter. market for sure right right and I guess another important side to this is, you know, how are we educating um the workforce because I don't feel like um 
enough universities or schools are preparing people for AI as an example or blockchain, right? I mean, there are some, but I don't think that from the supply side of getting people into this industry, it's it's relatively hard from what I know. Um, so how do you see um, people sort of entering this space? Because, you know, you are involved in the human resource side. This is uh, why I would like to know, you know, when you're hiring, for example, um, an AI specialist or someone in the blockchain space, are they coming through more traditional means of education? Are these people who have are self-taught what's that like it's a blend of both i guess but mostly people come from a simple computer engineering background with the hope with the hopes of becoming you know lead developer and so on and so forth however my personal opinion on this is that this has to change and what i'm looking at is that this wave of technology is now allowing people to do absolutely anything that they want to do anything that they want to achieve they can do so you have these courses available. They're all across, all over the internet. You have YouTube, which 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 gives you access to a lot of, for example, your podcast right here. Right. Uh, it's a learning curve for people. And uh, I think I've we've shared more information that you could prob- possibly take from, um, you know, a business course. And, yeah. and, and the question is why? Does the university have no value? University has its own value. It teaches you how to be critical and so on and so forth and how to right. critique things, right? Or, or, or reading material. Um, but what we're looking at now is that you as a human being with your own mind, free mind, can choose where you want to go, what you want to do. And the future is this, right? Um, where you do choose exactly what you want to do for a living. Right now, gamers are making money on YouTube, on Twitch, by, by just playing video games because they're good at it, right? So... I think the future will be very different to to what we see right now, especially, and like I said, it's going to be applicable to all sorts of, all, all, all walks of life, uh, including education and the way we perceive education. Right. So you see education evolving as well. 100%. Um, traditional means are not going to be They won't be successful. applicable because think about it. As soon as I graduate, the market has changed. Whatever right. I learned this year is not applicable now as soon as I graduate. Why? Because the market changed. Yeah. It's so fast. Yeah. So it just automatically does not apply. Yeah. That was one of the, the thoughts, right? Like how does education keep pace with how um, technology is evolving? I, I think education has kept pace. I think it's how, you, how do you keep pace? Interesting. With. So, so I mean... So based off of what you just said, there are resources out there. They're perhaps not in the traditional mediums that we're used to. Absolutely. And they're some of the most geniuses, the best out there. Awesome. For sure. Awesome. Um, Another thing we we perhaps didn't talk about much, but I do like to get um, technology experts to to comment on this, uh, is... How do you see currency, um, just because we have uh, in the crypto space where we're looking at Bitcoin um, several times, people have debunked it. They've said, you know, perhaps this is not going to be successful. It's a really volatile market, it goes up and down, um, and it's, it's sort of all over the place sometimes, but it survived. And there are new coins entering um, so just a, a comment on that. On, on Honestly, this is a matter space. of understanding the technology aspect of it. Right. And the fact that we don't understand what blockchain is, is why people say this stuff. Right. The only way you're getting rid of Bitcoin is if you shut down the internet, which you cannot do essentially one way or the other. Right. Or if the grids go down. Um, so I think it's very important to understand the technology aspect of things. Right. And um, I don't see it as... Um, Bitcoin is going or this is going or that is going. It's a technology. It's actually a technology that works. Aside mm-hmm. from the hacks and the cyber attacks, I'll put that on the side. But in terms of you being more efficient, um, yes, you need this technology. Um, it's a better system for sure. Mm-hmm. 
uh, if utilized in the right way, it mm-hmm. has monetary value. You could take your Bitcoin and you could get cash, right? So it tells mm-hmm. you that people are willing to use this as a medium of exchange. Um, with all of this, it's um, bound to take over. And I am very, very certain that banks are, whether they like it or not, they have to embed this technology for sure. Right on, right on. Um, so we have just a few minutes left on, on for this chat. And uh, I'm going to go again back to the start. Uh, something, again, I, I like viewers to get out of this um, is, you know, was there um, a particular um, inspiration that really stuck to you? Um, something that helped you become an entrepreneur? Something that helped you pursue this field? Um you know, was it a personality? Was it a book? Was it a movie? It's, what shaped it? I think it was an amalgamation of certain things, certain reading material, understanding of finance, how the world works, essentially, I'd say, give or take. Yeah. Um, inflation is not just, just a word. It's not just a simple word. It's, it's if you understand what it means, I think it has a profound effect on you. Um, and if you can understand that the financial system and the way it operates is is in a particular way. And the only way for you to stay um, at the surface or go beyond is through the means of business. And then logically speaking, which is the best business you can do, um, which could have the highest returns and their tech came. So it really depends. But this was it from my perspective. It's more of a financial understanding of the world and how it works. And then how could you play a part in... How did you get introduced to it? How, what, what introduced or who introduced financial literacy? So it was, it was, it was a course in university that I took. It was called money. I see. And, uh, and I think it, it sort of just opened my eyes. And, and then obviously you have to have your interest. I'm sure I have, the, I had a lot of right. Uh, right. Uh, classmates, right? But it's just me yeah. who's, so I think it's, it's the way you also perceive things and, and what hits you hard. I guess, mm-hmm. in some way or the other. Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure, actually, why some things interest one and interest not interest the other. But no, I mean, uh, I get that. But this is something that relates to all of us, right? We like it or not, you're part of a financial system. I haven't met anyone who doesn't have a bank account or doesn't carry cash or... Doesn't have assets. It's mostly just a simple understanding, and and most people just don't have that understanding. Quite frankly, um, that so the, the value of money is. What's a good way to start? How would you, um, to someone who who's who doesn't have that that idea, or perhaps hasn't even thought of that I, element? I think it's just going into the history of money and right. its creation. Right. And and I think that's a good start. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So I think we have maybe a minute or so left. So again, um anything you would like to 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 leave as a departing thought for our viewers, um perhaps a book that that you, you think um people find will find uh, value in or something that can help them become an entrepreneur um, or, or anything along those lines, something that's helped your journey or, and, and something to, to help people take their dreams forward. Yeah, sure. So Sean Ellis, um, growth hacking, um, he's, he's, he's brilliant. Um, he also has a channel called growth hackers. I think you should join it. Awesome. Um, and then there's a book called the changing world order. If you want to understand the financial system, Right. where it's at right now. I think it's a phenomenal book. Um, right. And I think, yeah, if you read these two, it'll automatically open uh, Pandora's box for you, for you to just keep on diving in. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much for taking out You're the time. You're very welcome. Um, it was uh, very thought-provoking, this conversation. And I, I think, uh, and I hope uh, you all got some value out of uh, this conversation um, if you guys want to, you know, get in touch with Mustafa, he's got uh, his 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 brands. You could search for Renesis Tech or Arcadian Labs. Reach out to this guy if you've got 
you know, a technology product in mind. Uh, he can help you perhaps, uh, you know, get the services and the resources in place. Um, once again, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. And uh, good luck with, with all that you do. And thank you all so that much. Comes I need next. it. I need it. Thank you so Amazing. much. It was a pleasure. It was Amazing. a pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you.